All right, in this video, we're gonna show you how to run power out of spread. But first, we're gonna show you how to run power traditionally, especially from an I formation. And then later in this video, we're gonna show you how to run it from spread. But you need to understand a few things about power in order to run it from spread. So coach, we're gonna see an I formation here. We're gonna block it just the old school way because as mentioned, I think you need to understand power before you just back up in a shotgun and then try to run it again, right? Absolutely. So the first thing I wanna look at on screen is we're gonna have the front side tight end block back on the defensive end. We're gonna get this double team like you traditionally would in any power, which is gonna block back to the backside defensive, uh, excuse me, linebacker. We're gonna have the center block back and then the guard leading up through and then the fullback leading up through. So that's your traditional power out of I formation. And of course the running back is gonna lead through all of this and the quarterback is gonna hand the ball off to the running back. And coach, we've seen this play. Power's been around for years now. It doesn't matter if it's 1970 or if we're you know now in 2020. This power, this power play is going to remain essentially in playbooks all over the world. Yeah, and I think you see, uh, like like you mentioned, having that uh, different ways of running it at different alignments. The big thing is having those same principles be in place, whether you are running it out of 21 personnel, uh, 11 personnel, 12 personnel, whatever the case may be. Uh, having those same principles, having those same rules uh, like we talked about here and just doing different things uh, to take players out of the box in the spread alignment or blocking them up with some different matchup advantages that you might have uh, with your fullback or with an extra tight end in the game are really things to look at when you're uh, uh, coming up with that with that week to week game plan as well as what you want to install, install uh, in your offense holistically based on the personnel that you have available. So now we're going to get into what power looks like from the spread formation. And coach, we're seeing here, we don't have a fullback in the mix. And a lot of spread teams obviously are shying away from the fullback and replacing it with another speed spill, uh, skill guy like we see here in the slot. Let's talk about power from the spread formation and how it differs from what we just saw in the I formation. So yeah, we're losing uh, that extra blocker like you talked about. But things that we can do is use our alignments, use our splits. Uh, in that wide receiver sense of spreading things out to take guys out of the box like you see here. So there's still, we still got a good six on six matchup versus this two high look uh, with that extra fitter being that uh, play side safety. Uh, so as long as he stays high, we should be good in the run game numbers, but we're still going to have that same scheme up front. Got that out blocked by the tight end as, as long as in the outside alignment, get a good play side, double team up to that backside linebacker uh, from the play side guard and play side tackle that block back from the center. Uh, we're going to have a skip pull around, keeping our eyes locked on that play side inside linebacker, uh, who is our pulling target as we insert the lead for him. Then we'll have a backside hinge from that tackle. So really stepping down hard into that B gap, making sure that there is no B gap presence and then hinging back out uh, onto that C gap player, the defensive end, once no one declares. Uh, so in that case, if you do get some sort of a backside linebacker run through on a blitz or something, you're not getting screwed up because the big thing that can uh, kind of disrupt this play is backside run through, and we don't want that. Uh, so big emphasis there. A uh, big block there is to secure that B gap before we work out back to that backside. Uh, then some different things that you can do out of the spread alignment is do some of the uh, backdoor RPOs, like a quick little bubble. So if they did want to bring that guy into the box uh, as that extra seventh fitter, you could uh, RPO off of him, or you could even do the play side glance tag. So if that play side uh, field safety wanted to insert down, especially with that other safety hanging on the hash, we could run uh, some sort of a glance post, a quick post there to really take advantage of that seventh fitter to the play side. Just having answers to whatever the defense is going to give you is kind of the basis of the RPO and spread offense uh, and a really good look here off of power to give some run fit keys as well as put guys in conflict on the defensive perspective. Yeah, and that's a great point too is, you know, we're still trying to run power here in this spread formation by bringing this guard up and through. But as you alluded to is being able to still run this RPO concept. And what we'll draw here is, and I'm sure a lot of defenses that you may see will have this single high look, right? Whether they're playing uh, cover one or some sort of cover three. And, and to coach what you just mentioned too, having that glance RPO. And this is why RPOs have become so popular, especially coupled with traditional run schemes, is you're able to put defenders in conflict. Obviously, the RPO is a whole nother video that we could make, but essentially running power from spread, you can add these additional elements onto your traditional run schemes, which cause defenders to get in conflict, and then we can take advantage of the matchups. 
Absolutely. So like you, and like you talked about here, whether it's one high, two high, you just have to understand uh, who you're reading, who you're putting in conflict, what guys you have accounted for in the run scheme, and then making sure that you have some sort of an answer on the outside, whether it be with that bubble to the backside, take that overhang, uh, or in a too high look for that glance action, uh, taking that field safety or that roll down safety. If you really want to commit hard into the run fit, we'll take the throw. Uh, if he does want to sink off and play into that passing window, then we can hand the ball off and we should be good in run game numbers up front. Yeah, and just one other thing I want to talk about too is understanding that when you're running a spread offense, it's all about equating numbers to the box. And if they do bring that that linebacker down in this instance, as uh, Coach Ryan said, it's essentially it's six on six. But when they bring him in, now they have numbers advantage, and that's where you want to get that RPO and that second element into the game too to equate the numbers. And that's why essentially, if you're reading him or this backside end, okay. You, you're getting that six on six matchup, but still not favoring you. So you want to try to equate the numbers to your best advantage in order to get the football in space. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for our future videos. Also, if you want to watch more content, be sure to check out these videos and we'll see you next time.